welcome to Carolina Week Sports. I'm Sarah Moore. The high impact nature of football makes for great entertainment, but it also has the potential to end a player's season in a flash. Jay Spence brings you a first-hand look at Chase Rice's road back to the field. It was a James Madison game and the quarterback scrambled. Darrell hit him high and he was on his way down and I, I tried to hit him low, or, uh, up on his helmet, tried to take him down. And uh, he went across my body, my body twisted, my ankle stayed in the ground and as soon as it happened, I knew I was, I was in trouble, so. Oh my God, I don't know, that was, it was one of the worst feelings I've ever felt because first thing you think is all this work, all this work that I've done is paying off none. Because anytime someone gets injured, you know, there's a stages psychologically that a player goes through. You know, initially there, you know, there's some anger, there's some denial, and eventually they get to an acceptance level. But then you look at it, you got to look at the positives too. I, you know, I could get another year out of it. I, if I don't, then at least next year I'll be a lot bigger. But one of the main things we can do is keep them in a regular routine, making sure the player goes to meeting, that he comes to practice, that he stays mentally engaged in everything that's going on. And that helps them to you know, overcome some of that separation that they're feeling from the team. Uh, so I work out four days a week, which really helps me because I f at least feel good about myself that I'm doing something. And then I've talked to Coach Pagano lately. I've been uh, breaking down some film and stuff so that makes me actually feel like I'm helping out the team because that's the worst feeling is that you can't help out the team anymore. I've set some new goals for myself you know I had goals you know you want to play well you want to be an All-American All-ACC obviously that's not gonna happen now but uh, you know just trying to get back for next year that's my one goal is next year whatever date our first game is I cannot wait for that. As an athletic trainer, that's really why we're in this job. You know, it's it's to take a guy who more or less is at his probably worst moment professionally when his a season's ended or he's faced with a severe injury, and to take him from that day all the way through the months, the, the tough days of coming in early and doing rehab to finally see him back on the field and make a play. Um, that's why we're in this business. The torn ligaments in Rice's left ankle are healing, and he's expected to make a full recovery. Heading into its last regular season game of the year, the field hockey team is still undefeated. Carolina is the only NCAA Division I team that's undefeated. The Heels' impressive record is a stellar 17-0 with 11 shutouts. But who's counting? The Heels will try to wrap up a perfect regular season Saturday at Old Dominion. Coming off a tough loss to Virginia Tech this weekend, the men's soccer team took on the High Point Panthers last night at Fetzer Field. In the 25th minute, Bill Borski feeds the ball up the middle to Brian Shriver where he fires a shot from beyond the box and the high point the goalie is frozen. With only a minute and a half left in the first, Eddie Ababio tries to fake out the defender. He'll lay the ball off to Gary Lewis who bends it right past into the upper 90 uh, past the keeper. After a penalty kick by Ababio in the 61st minute, Johan Carvajal attacks down the middle where he blasts one off the near post making the score 4-0. Carvajal says it feels good to finally score one as a Tar Heel. I just released the shot and uh, it went in. It was on frame, hit the post, went in. Feels good. It was first goal of the season, you know. So first goal since I've been a transfer here. The seventh-ranked women's soccer team will look to continue its winning ways tomorrow night at Fetzer Field. UNC will host rival NC State at 7 p.m. to begin its final homestand of the year. The Heels are 36-1-2 all-time against the Wolfpack. UNC is looking to build on its season-high six-game win streak. Sophomore Casey Nogaira leads the team with nine goals. The Heels are currently 13-3. Last week, we told you about Chip Peterson, a Carolina swimmer with Olympic potential. On Saturday, the UNC sophomore got one step closer to becoming Beijing-bound. He finished second in the National 10K Open Water Olympic Trials meet. In April, Peterson will compete in the International 10K Open Water Meet, and the top 10 swimmers from that event will advance onto the Olympics. Well, Adam, I hear that you used to be a swimmer back in high school. Well, and I can tell you that it takes a whole lot of talent. It's not really comparable with running that same distance because it involves so much more physical strength and a lot more muscles, so it's uh, really great that he's able to do that. Definitely. Thank you, Sarah. I know a lot of people who went to all sorts of places over fall break. Coming up, see what some of them learned walking down the streets of an old southern city. 